All right, guys, I wanted to try out these different watercolor mediums um, and kind of do some demos. Um, I'm going to have to break this up into probably several videos because that's a lot. Um, I also, so my main one I'm going to actually demo is going to be the granulated uh, watercolor medium. Super excited about that. And then there are these different kinds of inks. So I had been using Higgins black ink and I found it that it's not really as black as I want it to be. So I um, read some reviews online and I'm trying trying Daler Rowney's uh, brand of, okay, so there's two different kinds of inks I have here. I have the acrylic ink and then I have a watercolor ink that I'm going to test out, okay? Um, set these aside. I also bought, this is pretty cool, they have a box set that you can buy online. This box set includes six different inks. So my favorite color because I, I really wanted to get some other colors. You could use these in so many different ways. I've seen artists online not only just paint with these but you can tone like your paper that you want to draw on top of. So I saw another artist who actually would water this down a little bit and then um, paint on top of the pastel paper to give it whatever uh, tone of color. And it was really cool because then it it really put a really nice uh, color underneath it. So I've got six different colors. You've got the sepia, emerald green, that comes in the set. You also have a scarlet and then this is a really pretty blue this is a cyan it's probably magenta yeah magenta oh and these are really tight in the box so I'm probably gonna take them out of them because it's, it's a bit difficult and a lemon yellow lemon yellow okay so I'm gonna set these aside here so I just wanted to show you the actual product I am working on this um, foam um, foam core, the styro um, core, um, so that I don't get my kitchen table too messy. Um, I have a watercolor block that I'd used previously for testing out some watercolor medium that I showed you from Windsor & Newton. This is using just regular watercolors. Okay, so watercolor granulation medium will actually separate the pigment pigments so it becomes more granule, like you'll get this kind of texture because usually you want your watercolors nice and smooth, okay? Um, but with this granulation medium, it kind of separates out the um, the pigment from the actual what, what it's suspended in. So yeah, it's really interesting when you see it happen. But anyways, so here's the thing. It didn't separate it as much. I mean, you get this kind of slight texture to it, but I really loved some examples that I saw of this fine artist. She's based out of the UK. Her name's Naomi Tideman and her watercolors are fantastic. And there's another illustrate, uh, there's an illustrator I love as well from the UK. Her name is Elizabeth Zwerger and she won the Hans Christian Andersen Award a few years back and she uses some kind of, maybe not necessarily this brand of uh, the uh, not the blending medium see they look the same you got to watch out granulation medium um she may use the schmick uh they have a like a nebulizer that you can spray really or it's called an atomizer i guess and it sprays a fine mist of this stuff and you can get these wonderful textures that you normally could not get from just painting with watercolor and a brush okay so i'm gonna get set up and we're gonna switch over to testing this out All right, guys, so I have these, um, I used these for a clay project when I was teaching elementary art to make these clay cupcakes, and I just had all of these, so I was like, I'm gonna use these to put my um, inks in. Okay, so be mindful, because if you are choosing to um, follow along and you're using these acrylic-based inks, so think about what happens when acrylic paint dries on a palette. Okay, it's permanent, okay? Where watercolor, is a medium that if you let it dry you can obviously just go ahead and use a wet towel or whatever and wipe it clean so with this I got to really be mindful of the difference between that and then I have this uh, Dale Rowney and this one is just a watercolor 
ink okay so I'm gonna have to be really careful about that so I'm gonna go ahead and I really want to use the sepia I'm gonna use the sepia and then I thought it would be really nice to use this lovely green because it kind of gives you this forest feel and so I am gonna just turn this and I think I'm just gonna shake it just a little bit to because sometimes pigments settle you know just never know so I'm gonna turn it I'm gonna put the um, squeeze the top get some of that and drop the sepia in here okay I love this color it is so pretty I'd like to get a burnt umber as well um, okay here's my green oh I forgot I'm gonna shake it just a little bit I'm sorry guys there's this background noise that you're hearing of my AC it's very hot where I live so I'm gonna do like three there we go I'm gonna make sure I close this tight okay yeah so I don't care if these cups get messed up okay brushes I'm just gonna use because I don't want to use a really good brush I mean I have more expensive brushes but this is a two dollar painters brush and I'm going to put it on my watercolor clock Whew, that's, that's nice and thick And then I'm going to grab another brush. I need to use one of my not so good brushes, but anyways, I'm just going to blend this together. And just put that. Okay. All right. So I've painted some swatches, and now I have what they call a pipette. Um, they sell these at Dick Blick, and um, I think I got a set of four or five of these and then I bought the little eyedropper as well so whatever you have it handy like that but I found that this was really nice and easy to use I am then going to use my watercolor granulation medium this is from Windsor & Newton it's clear and then you squeeze the top of the pipette so that you can suction in some of this medium see how it suctions in I feel like a mad scientist okay so now I'm gonna like ooh, just sprinkle this on here I'm gonna do the best neatest job but you can already see it separating I think I need more because it kind of went thick on this and obviously where it's and then I probably have to use a little bit of gravity they say and I don't care if this runs onto my so this is what I see happening in like some of these watercolor paintings that I really admire like this kind of texture so I could probably go in a little bit more um, with the uh, the granulation medium so So I want to work before, yeah, because once it dries, see, it's not activating right here at all because it already started drying. And so using the gravity kind of pull. And I'm going to put a link so you can check out, like, if you have an understanding on how to control this, you can get some beautiful textures. So like I said, the two artists that I'm going to men uh, I mentioned earlier, I'll put a link in the description box. But these would be really hard to get those kind of textures using a watercolor brush. So look at that. Isn't that pretty? Wow. I love the green. Look at that green. So vibrant. Like, this would be an amazing texture for tree uh, bark or dirt, um, a forest, okay? So I just wanted to showcase that. Oh, and by the way, if you're wondering what kind of paper I'm using, this is Dick Blick's watercolor block. It's a 140 pound watercolor cold press paper, okay? 
So I'm gonna let this dry, and then this is something I can scan into the computer um, because I'm kind of been switching over to do more digital art. So I can scan this in and reuse this texture in a digital collage. So I'm super excited. This is very um, unpredictable. Obviously, you do have to use quite a bit of the um, Winsor Newton uh, granulated watercolor medium. Um, I really would have loved to buy the Schmick um, the little spray bottle they had but they were totally out at the at the dick Blitz store so anyways um, I definitely will purchase some of that later on because that one gives you a little bit more of a speckled effect it almost kind of reminds me if you use salt on watercolor but it gives you very quick fast results where salt you kind of have to wait for it to dry and it's it's not always maybe as consistent. Um, you also want to make sure, like if you're doing this with watercolor instead of the ink, make sure you decide to know like how much granulation you're going to actually have because if the pigment tends to be more granulated in the first place, it's going to react better with this. So I found like uh, Ultramane Blue worked pretty well as far as with my M Gram watercolors, but this, you just can't get these kind of results if you're using just the plain watercolor, even if it's highly granulated, because I tried over and over and over again. And so it's this, it's the Daler Rownies, okay, acrylic ink, okay? So I'm gonna pause this video and then I really am super excited. I wanna test it out with the actual Daler Rownies, the actual, um, their watercolor inks and see if my results will be still as